Welcome back, and let's continue with our discussion on this segment of interfaith issues. We are talking about where is the Christ in Christianity? We don't expect to find discrepancies like who carried the cross. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Simon carried the cross. In John, Jesus Christ carried the cross. Again, which one was it? We don't expect to find differences over little things, such as what was the color of the robe that he was wearing? Scarlet, as in one gospel, or purple, as in another? Did the Roman soldiers put gall in the wine, or did they put myrrh? Look at the Gospels. You will find parallel stories that do not agree. Was Jesus crucified before the third hour, as in Mark 15, 25, or after the sixth hour, as in John 19, 14 through 15? Now, before the third hour and after the sixth hour, there is no way of reconciling these. There is no way that that time frame can overlap. You cannot have it both ways. And we are only talking about the events that are recorded leading up to the alleged crucifixion. After the alleged crucifixion, all similarity between the stories becomes almost unrecognizable. Now, that's a hefty challenge. And I would challenge the serious and the sincere to go and read the Gospels, look at them side by side, and compare the stories after the alleged crucifixion to see exactly on what details they agree. One of the most important details that they do not agree on is the last words of Jesus Christ. Now, think about this. Throughout time, whenever you have a famous personality, when that person is dying, their followers, the people who who love that person or emulate that person or want to just write history books about that person, they hang upon their deathbed waiting for their last words. You can even find books about this. There's one book called Famous Last Words. And what is interesting is that there is no disagreement about the last words of the famous personalities in books like Famous Last Words. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, one gospel records that his last words were, it is finished. Another gospel records that his last words were, it is finished? No, not at all. The other gospel records that his last words are, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Which is it? Again, you can't have both. You can't have he said this and then said that, and they were both his last words. No, if you said this and then you said that, this is no longer his last words. These are only a few of a long list of scriptural inconsistencies, and they underscore the difficulty in embracing the New Testament as unadulterated scripture, scripture that we can be comfortable, be comfortable hanging our salvation upon, trusting that this book will get us into paradise because it is letter perfect and we can be assured that it is pristine revelation from God because quite clearly it is not. There are inconsistencies that cannot be rectified with one another. Hence the question, where is the Christ in Christianity? On one hand, we have a religion that is named after Jesus Christ. And if you ask any Christian, what is the foundation of your faith? What does it mean to be Christian? They will say it means to follow the teachings and the example of Jesus Christ. But now if that is the case, if that is the case, why do we find such a large disparity between what Jesus Christ teaches and what the church teaches as the tenets of Trinitarian Christian faith? Let me give you some examples. Jesus Christ taught Old Testament law. That's why, as I said in the beginning of this talk, he's known as Rabbi Jesus. Paul negated it. Jesus Christ taught that God is one God. The Pauline theologians derived the Trinity. Jesus called himself the Son of Man 88 times. 88 times he called himself the Son of Man. Not once did he ever call himself the Son of God in a literal, begotten, not made sense. What did Paul call Jesus Christ? The Son of God. What do Christians know Jesus Christ as now? Allegedly the Son of God. We have to ask ourselves, 
when we are following the tenets of Christian faith, or those who follow the tenets of Christian faith, what are they adhering to more closely? The teachings of Jesus Christ or the teachings of Paul? And make no mistake about it, they are not the same. The teachings of Paul, as I just stated, in most cases are contradictory to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Negating the Old Testament law, denying the unity of God, denying the direct accountability, meaning praying directly to God in, instead of praying to a saint or an intercessor, identifying Jesus Christ as a man and not as the Son of God. These are critical points upon which Paul and Jesus Christ were at odds. Paul was not only at odds with the teachings of Jesus Christ, but he was corrected by Jesus' disciples. It is well documented in the New Testament, the animosity between Peter and Paul, the animosity between James and Paul. So again, the title of this talk, Where is the Christ in Christianity? Because what we are finding is that what Jesus Christ taught is not the foundation of the tenets of faith encountered in Trinitarian churches of this time. Rather, the Trinitarian churches of this time are based predominantly upon the teachings of Paul. How recognizable is this? Is this something that I am seeing for the first time nobody else has seen? Is this something that has escaped the knowledge of Christian scholars? Not at all. They are well aware of it, but they are shy to talk about it. Let me read some quotes. Lehman contributes, quote, what Paul proclaimed as Christianity was sheer heresy, which could not be based on the Jewish or Essene faith or on the teaching of Rabbi Jesus. But as Schoenfeld says, the Pauline heresy became the foundation of Christian orthodoxy and the legitimate church was disowned as heretical. Was this only to be found in the writings of Lehman? No. Barty Ehrman, probably the leading scholar of biblical textual criticism alive today, speaking upon this very subject, commented, quote, Paul's view was not universally accepted, or one might argue even widely accepted. Even more striking, Paul's own letters indicate that there were outspoken, sincere, and active Christian leaders who vehemently disagreed with him on this score and considered Paul's views to be a corruption of the true message of Christ. One should always bear in mind that in this very letter of Galatians, Paul indicates that he confronted Peter over just such issues. He disagreed, that is, even with Jesus' closest disciple. Commenting on some of the early Christians in the pseudo-Clementine literature, Barty Ehrman wrote, Paul has corrupted the true faith on a brief vision, which he has doubtless misconstrued. Paul is thus the enemy of the apostles, not the chief of them. He is outside the true faith, a heretic to be banned, not an apostle to be followed. Joel Carmichael, quote, we are a universe away from Jesus. If Jesus came only to fulfill the law and the prophets, if he thought that not one iota, not a dot would pass from the law, that the cardinal commandment was, quote, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and that no one was good but God, what would he have thought of Paul's handiwork? Paul's triumph meant the final obliteration of the historic Jesus. There are many others who have made similar comments. The point is that in analyzing Christianity, we have to choose who to take the teachings from. If we are choosing to take our teachings from the prophet Jesus, let's do it. Let's take from his teachings. Let's go and buy a red letter Bible that records all the words of Jesus Christ in red and 
we will find everything that Jesus said very clear. You will find everything that I have spoken about in this last 20 minutes. You will find him speaking of one God. You will find him speaking of himself as the Son of Man. You will find him speaking of direct accountability. You will find him speaking of the fact that he was an ethnic prophet, etc., etc. But if you choose to follow the teachings of Paul, well, then you are welcome to follow the Pauline, Trinitarian Christianity that prevails in this time. But before you do that, I would suggest one thing. Let's take a close look at these issues I have described. Jesus Christ teaching that there is only one God, teaching that the prophets were men and sons of men, teaching direct accountability. What other religion, what other of the Abrahamic religions conveys these simple true values. If you answered Islam, you'd be correct. Here is a religion that honors Jesus Christ as the prophet, that recognizes his humanity, recognizes the truth of the revelation that he conveyed, but at the same time recognizes the very human corruptions, whether intentional or not, that crept into that revelation over time. At the same time, Islam is a religion of Tawheed, belief in the oneness of God, as Jesus professed. And it is a religion that fulfills everything that Jesus Christ himself spoke of. If you want to learn more about this, expand your knowledge on the subject, please go to my website, www.leveltruth.com. Look at the first of my series of books, Misguided and you can carry it further from there. For now, this is Dr. Brown concluding this issue of Interfaith Issues, and looking forward to the next time we meet on this channel. Peace, and thank you for sharing this time with me. I feel the